Hey everyone, Julie Livingston here with Want Leverage Communications for another installment of PR Patter. Today I have a fantastic guest. Um, and you know what? It's Women's History Month, so a perfect guest. Um, I have with me Sonia Schnee. Sonia is with Jersey Video Production, and she is a video producer, content creator, digital content creator, and social media strategist. Sonia, it is great to see you this morning. Hi, Jess. You too, Julie. Thank you so much for having me on uh, as a guest. Thank you. You know, video content has become so pervasive and everybody wants to use it, right? We're using our iPhones. We're, we're just using video as very often, you know, we're on Zoom calls all day. Um, but how do you get it right? Like, isn't it best, like in my world, I create a strategic communications plan and underneath that umbrella, um, create separate strategies for social media, et cetera. So it all kind of dovetails. How does that work with, is there a video strategy? Right, right. So what you do is a hugely important first step that cannot be overlooked. You really do need to have a strategy in place when creating videos. Uh, you know, of course, uh, you know this as well, knowing who your target audience is, uh, different things about what kind of business it is that you you own and run, uh, where people might be getting their, their information and how they're consuming it. And so with video, uh, strategy is, is very important. I've been seeing two different trends with companies and how they're using video. One is creating a series of short, what I like to call snackable videos mm. that they'll post regularly on places like LinkedIn and other social media platforms. And then also longer form videos in the form of video podcasts and web series, which are great for building community. So having a, a strategy to your video is very important. Similarly, how you would uh, plan out maybe a strategy for an email campaign. It's also good to have a strategy for video and know what messaging you want to put out there and in what order and who you want to target uh, for each video. And what you want to use video for, right? Video mm -hmm. may not be the right um, methodology, the right platform for every kind of message you want to get out there. So really planning in advance what you want to use video for, I think is also important. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. To go in there with a, a reason. Is there something that video adds to the, the conversation or the information that you're presenting that uh, that adds to and amplifies or somehow uh, improves the information that you're providing? Uh, like a common misconception is that people feel like they have to be on camera if, uh, say, they're a coach or a consultant. Uh, and not necessarily if that helps with your particular business and your business is you, you are the service that you're providing. Uh, it's probably a good idea to show your, your face on camera so people can have a sense of what it might be like to work with you. But uh, if you're presenting things like maybe uh, the, the facts and figures or you know testimonials, or you don't necessarily have to have just your face on there. Sometimes, right, right having a picture or a carousel of photos with a text on them might be a really effective way to convey the information that you want to convey. So yes, figuring out exactly what information you're putting out there and what's the most effective, easiest way for your audience to digest that information. I mean, you bring up a good point and that there are lots of different kinds of video. There's lots of different kinds of video content that you could um, tap into. So <clears throat> there's the, I guess, the, the talking head, right? Mm -hmm. Then there's one that's kind of more of a narrative, right? Where you're really expelling facts and sharing information where the person doesn't necessarily have to be on camera, but the visual, the you, you could create a visual, compelling visual story of the information you want to communicate. Mm -hmm. What other right. kinds of video yeah. content are people creating? Right. So, uh, so you mentioned one, which is the uh, talking head, which you can put, you know, on your for social media, you can put it in an email and do a little elevator pitch. There are also videos that are more like explainer videos where maybe it's animated and you're showing maybe infographics and that's a really great way to convey uh, maybe concepts that uh, are a little harder to, to film in person or you don't right. want to have a specific face or a specific look to a 
client uh, and you want to have something that's a little more universal, uh, explainer videos, animated videos are, are great for that. Uh, there's uh, mixed media videos are also really popular, which is taking maybe your existing photos, uh, maybe video clips that other video production companies have done in the past, uh, user sourced, user generated content, mm. which is great. Uh, I don't know if you've seen some you of the stuff you take from- on, you might take on your phone. Right. Yes. Yes. Things that uh, customers, clients, users have filmed uh, of themselves, like Android really taps into that and some of their commercials. Same with Google, where it's there. The company isn't creating this content themselves. They're essentially asking for it and getting submissions and creating something very powerful that speaks to the power of what it is the service or the product that they provide. So there's different ways that you can use a video. You don't always have to be on camera to create something effective. Sometimes you can create kind of a whole mix of, of multimedia and, and weave it all together to uh, really tell the story that you want to tell in an effective way. You know, one of the things I, I, I'd love your input on is, you know, as a public relations and LinkedIn marketing um, expert, I often um, am tasked with working with C-level executives. And in so many organizations, they are the go-to person to represent the the brand, but that that uh, level of of a leader is not always so great on camera. Mm-hmm. Um, so, how do organizations kind of navigate this and choosing the right person to be on camera? And how do you get training to be a better on camera spokesperson? Right, right. So, I'll start with the the how do you get training part first, because there is actually a great person out there, which uh, I believe you already know her, Carrie Barrett, who does some great on-camera training. Uh, if you really feel like you want to be on camera and you're dedicated to to that path and you just need some help becoming more comfortable in front of the lens and, and uh, learning how to speak a little bit better in front of the camera, then definitely an on-camera uh, coach is a great person. And to, there's uh, nothing wrong with in. that. Not everybody has a natural ability to be, um, to really look great and sound great on camera. Mm-hmm. Right. It really does take, uh, take practice because there are the camera behaves in a different way than, <laughs> say, if you were just looking at yourself in the mirror. Uh, your mirror, the mirror, say, on your bathroom wall captures one thing, but the camera is capturing other things. Uh, there's things like lighting. There's the added uh, aspect of audio. There's the way you're positioning yourself. Uh, what's in the, the background, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right. But there's nothing wrong with not feeling comfortable on camera. I mean, I've been doing video for a very long time and it took me up until recently to actually start making my own videos myself Ah! and putting myself on camera because I really, I had so many things that I did not necessarily like about the way that I uh, appeared on, you know, looking back at old like VHS tapes or DVDs or whatnot or (laughs) videos that I filmed myself. So it really does take practice. Even someone who does video professionally, it was not a natural thing that I quickly turned on the camera and I just felt so at home there. You really have to practice, even if it's just, uh, you know, turning on, right, like StreamYard or a QuickTime or just on your cell phone and just recording yourself, talking about your day and then, you know, watching the video back and, and seeing maybe what your mannerisms are. Do you look off screen a lot? Do you look down? Etc. And it really is, you're putting on a little bit of a performance when you're in front of the camera, because there's certain things about your, your personality or maybe gestures that you have to amplify uh, in front of the camera for them to really appear. So there is a little bit of showmanship with being in front of the camera and asking for help to improve in that is not something to be ashamed of at, at all. I'd be surprised. There's, I think, very few people who naturally get on camera and just feel so at home there. And they're probably Broadway stars right. and people who <laughs> are very comfortable with performing uh, in front of strangers. So it's kind of like a muscle, right? You have to just build it up mm-hmm. and you have to keep working it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. A hundred percent. I find that every week in doing this little show that I do, that I'm constantly, you know, looking at myself on camera and seeing what, what I thought I did right and what I could tweak a little bit. And I, it's mm-hmm. just, 
an evolving process for me. I try not to beat myself up too much about it, but um, it is an evolving process. In fact, right before this interview, I was asking Sonia about my backdrop, which has been a little problematic for me as I record from my home office um, and how to make it, how to make it better. So I think the next time you see me on PR Patter, I might have a different background because of, of Sonia's advice. <laughs> Man, I'm I'm happy to I'm happy to help with that. There's sometimes <laughs> it's just a very little thing that you you tweak and yeah, and exactly it can make a huge difference. I I find that I experiment with one little thing every week. That just se seems to be how it goes for me. So Sonia, what is the per is there a perfect length for video content? Right. So I would say it depends on your business and your audience, and then where your audience lives. So for example, uh, say you are a, a beauty company, you're probably going to want to target TikTok or Instagram and built into those platforms, there are actual limits on the length of the video that you can upload. So you're going to want to upload something that's 60 seconds or less. And that's because you're catering to the, the platform that your audience lives on versus if you have an audience that is uh, committed to uh, absorbing more in-depth knowledge and uh, is searching maybe for more of a, a community. They're more dedicated to listening to uh, advice on how to do something. Then you can make videos that are longer, that are 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour long, um, like a podcast, for example, or a, a a more in-depth how-to video. So the ideal length really depends on, again, your business and who your audience is and where you're placing it. Uh, I would say generally overall short videos are great, short as in 60 seconds or less, or even you know two minutes or less, are great if you're trying to attract new potential customers or clients, people who maybe don't really know who you okay, are yet. I was going to ask you, to, why is that? Okay. Right, right. They don't want to invest a lot of time right off the bat. So for those, if you're trying to attract a new audience, I would say go shorter and try to reel them in with multiple short videos. So it's like putting little breadcrumbs down. You're going to have them follow the path and eventually they're going to want to eat another breadcrumb, another one and find out more about you. So it depends, right, a little bit on the audience. And, so how um, do you make your well videos you know compelling so that they're not just all about you? Mm -hmm. Right, right. There's, um, it's interesting with the short videos that they seem to have tend more to be kind of like the, the me, me, me feel where it's videos about me. This is me. This is what I do versus sometimes the, the longer videos like podcasts and things are more of the us, us, us and building a community and network of like-minded individuals. But uh, in terms of how you create something that's, that's interactive, where the audience doesn't just feel like they're being spoken to, but rather they're being uh, interacted with. There's different strategies for that. And again, it depends a little bit on who your, your audience is and what the, the, the voice of your company is, or the, the, the culture of your company is, do you want to have something that's, you know, a little playful and fun? There's things you can do with video with putting, you know, filters on things or having interesting edits or little sound effects and things. Yeah. If that's not part of your company culture and say you have an IT company, you're doing something that's very serious, then maybe having little, you know, uh, cartoon birds flying in the back of it is not, is maybe not appropriate. <laughs> Probably not <laughs> so, in line with your brand values. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Right. So it's, um, so it depends. Yeah. A little bit on what, what is the, 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 the atmosphere of your business or what is the atmosphere that you want to, you want to portray? What's the culture that you want to. So I work this. with all yeah. different kinds of organizations and um, currently some of them are, are in pretty serious businesses, you know, management, consulting, technology. Um, how would you say, what is a good, a good way for companies that have more of a serious product or service to kind of warm them up a little bit? Because one of the things that I like to do when I'm creating content for executives on LinkedIn or I'm working on placing 
their content in the media or writing by byline articles, whatever, is to kind of warm them up, to humanize them. How can video do that? And especially for more serious kinds of uh, businesses. Right, right. So this is something that I actually love when I'm working with clients, especially ones that maybe video is something new that they're venturing into and right, they need to, to be warmed up a little bit. I'd say for no matter what kind of business you run, whether you're a solopreneur or whether you're running a, a multinational corporation, that being on video is a great way to show off not only what you do and your expertise, how knowledgeable you are, but also to show off who are you as a person. That if you can get your audience to somehow identify with you or remember some personal detail about you that they feel like they have in common with you, that can only help your cause and make you more memorable than, say, one of your competitors. Totally. I could so, not agree more. I mean, mm -hmm. people do business with people, right? They yes. want to know mm -hmm. who you are as a person and what they're buying into. And um, I think that leaders often, well, maybe this is more in the past, but they often were very, you know, very stiff and very... Um, formal in their communication, but now things are very different, probably because of the advent of video. And there's a huge opportunity to, for leaders to present themselves as real and authentic. Right, right. I'd say a great first step that this is actually something I do when I'm uh, interviewing leaders on camera, say we're going to do a, a, you know, a series of videos and to kind of warm them up in front of the camera, a very easy way to get them to loosen up and talk about themselves and become instantly more uh, relatable is to ask them, what has been your personal journey? How did you get to where you are today? Because then it makes them think that. about, okay, what were my dreams as a child? Where did I grow up? What did I end up doing? Maybe my path was a zigzag and I realized I was passionate about X, Y, Z. And then they start thinking about, oh, okay, I, I started this business because I didn't want someone else to go through what I went through, what my parents went through, or I had this pro they They start to remember the the, the human element of, of why they're passionate about what they do or why they're doing what they do. And then when you lay that groundwork, then their personality starts to come out. Right. They start more. to light up a little bit in the eyes. Right. 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 It's not like they're trying to be like, OK, I've got this whole script to memorize of these factual things. It's more like, oh, OK, now they're starting to look a little more inward. And when you get people to to do that a little more, it helps them open up and become more comfortable because it's no longer like a. Uh, the, the pressure of feeling maybe like an interrogation or something like that, or <laughs> right. you have to get everything right. Now it's like, oh, I'm just talking about myself. Well, that's easy. There's no pressure there. And and then it makes it uh, makes video and really any other platform feel uh, a little less intimidating because you're just talking about yourself. Yeah, I, I, I think that's I think that's wonderful. It's a real icebreaker, I'm sure, for a lot of um, leaders who might feel very self-conscious on camera at first. Mm -hmm. You know, right, what are right. some of the, um, the some of the errors people make in their video production? What are some of the most common things that you see? You work mm -hmm. with a lot of different clients. Right, right. So there's, I guess, different levels of video production. There's uh, a DIY video, which is do it yourself for those who want to, say, record their own videos on their phones or on their computer and post it. Uh, just on the technical aspect, there's things like not having a, a microphone or making sure that your audio is strong. There's nothing more frustrating than uh, wanting to listen to someone who may be speaking like about a great topic, them. but you, yeah, you can't hear them. You can't understand what they're saying. You can't make it out. It's muffled or there's noise in the background. So that's an, uh, an easy first one to fix, which is get a microphone. Um, a lighting is another thing. If someone's shrouded in darkness and they look like they're on some kind of uh, interrogation video that maybe you see on the news, <laughs> they're in the shadows. It's That doesn't help unless you are... Uh, you know, someone who's in witness protection and that's part of your plan. <laughs> and, then, and then that fits. So it's something like a ring light, uh, which is what I'm using right now that provides some, you know, full, yes, yes. Some full, nice, soft lighting coverage. Uh, so just technically those are some things to, to, uh, to fix right off the bat. And that will improve your video and the enjoyment that your viewers feel when they watch your, listen to your video right off the bat. Uh, 
But larger than that, say when I'm uh, working with a client and, you know, working with a, bringing in a production crew, uh, again, kind of going back to the, the beginning, which you mentioned uh, at the beginning of our talk, which is strategy, knowing why you're making the video and thinking about, ultimately, it's, you have to think about the, the audience and what kind of impact is the video going to have on them? Because it's, it's very easy uh, as a business owner, I've caught myself doing this as well. And I've had to stop myself where it's kind of like, well, what's going to make me feel better about myself or maybe boost my ego or right. know, something like that. And then I have to remember, no, it's about the person who's listening to it. And yeah, like what's in it what for them? What will they right, get? Right. What's the takeaway for them? Right, right. While they're watching your video, think about, okay, what do I want them to know about me? What maybe one, two, three facts do I want them to remember to be burdened to their brain when my video ends? What do I want them to feel ab about me or feel towards me? What kind of impression do they want to have of, of me, my business, my product, my service? And then at the end, what do I want them to do? Is it, you know, a, a really great video is one that inspires your audience to do something uh, rather than, oh, that's it. Well, <laughs> thank you for giving up your time. You know, tell them to, even if it's something as simple as, you know, visit our website or if it's a series, tune in next week when I, I post again or sign up for the, uh, this webinar. Or uh, even if it's as simple as something that's, you know, share, share with others who you think may benefit from this information. The greatest compliment that you can get uh, when you make a video and when you have a video made about you is that people want to share it with their family, their friends, their colleagues, because then those people become your free marketing team. They're going out there and spreading your message Absolutely. to everyone they know in their network. And you just have to sit back and, uh, you know, wait for people to reach out and, and that kind of thing. So that's, I mean, that's I idea. think when, when you can become a resource for other people in no matter who, what you do, <laughs> It, it's it, it's going to keep them coming back. Mm -hmm. Right. It's going to right. capture their attention. They're going to see you in a different way and think of you as an expert. And so I think if you can impart information, takeaways that, that the audience could really use right away, that's going to position you well. And they're going to want to watch more of your video content as a result. Right, right. Yes, there is. There's definitely that balance of giving away information that is helpful to them, but not giving away everything right, where right. to the point where it's like, oh, well, why should I hire you or reach out to your firm? Uh, if you told me everything I can just do by myself. <laughs> so, right. There is a little bit of that balance. But again, uh, if you remember to keep it short, then by default, you can only fit so much information in there. So then you're you know, you're not giving away absolutely everything because you're trying to do it within, you know, 60 seconds or so if you're doing those, you know, short videos uh, for social media. Sonia, when you work with clients, do you help them to kind of identify how long their video should be and kind of how to how to tell their, the story that they need to tell on video? Because I think a lot of clients, a lot of companies probably have different ideas um, and maybe overly ambitious. Right, right. Yes, yes. So, uh, so script writing is definitely something that I help with. And I, I use that term kind of broadly, because script writing suggests that, you know, you have a specific script that you're memorizing, like right. an actor, and then you're, you know, the camera turns on, and you're just repeating words. But uh, I also use scripts, uh, script writing as kind of this overall term with helping you figure out what the story of your video is going to be. And by story, uh, you know, every, every video really does have a story. You might think, okay, I sell a product. It's, you know, I'm selling a uh, copier paper. What's the story behind copier paper? Well, there's the, the, pe the people that you want to serve. They have some kind of problem or some kind of need or desire. And your product is fulfilling that need. When you think of, you know, uh, how effective, uh, videos are, uh, infomercials are like, okay, I have a problem with my neck. Oh, it's because I'm sleeping on this pillow. And then, oh, I get this pillow and I lie on it. And now I have a great night's sleep. And here's the pillow, go out and buy the pillow. Uh, <laughs> similar, like same thing can be used for a service. I have this problem. This is the service. I use it. My life is better. 
So always kind of thinking of what story. So even when you have something that you might think, oh, it's just an object. It doesn't have a life story. For the person whose problem you're trying to solve, there is a story. Um, how do you go from, from bad to, to better or great? So I work with companies and trying to figure out, you know, which are their products or services are they wanting to highlight? Uh, sometimes it, again, depends a little bit on where they want to post their video. Say they want to create a video for their website. Sure. And then for that, you might want to give something that's more of an overview. Again, it depends a little bit on the company, but that you might want to touch upon a little bit more of maybe the backstory of how the company got formed or what their core values or mission is, if that's appropriate for that particular company. Or it might be something where, okay, here's a variety of services. So when someone lands on the homepage, they can get within 60 seconds, okay, know exactly what this company is about and how they're going to help me. Um, so it depends a little bit on on that. But, you know, there's a whole variety of different uh, uh methods and ways to kind of shape, to shape a story. And uh, sometimes what I'll do, you mentioned for companies or clients that are really ambitious and they want to make a video about everything. Uh, what I recommend is, okay, if you want to do that, uh, we can record, uh, say like a longer interview, but then instead of creating a very long video, what strategically is better to, is to cut up that video into yeah, shorter yeah. segments and have almost like little chapters that then you can place in, in different places. You can put one chapter on your website or another on social media, uh, on YouTube, I love that. You put in your email. So uh, it's right. taking- You don't have to a, do it in one in one, one take. <laughs> right, right. Yes, yes. You don't have to cram everything into one video and it's, it's uh, really better if you don't and instead- Kind of break break things up because then every video has a specific you know thesis or or theme sure. and the viewer is prepared of for what it is they know what they're in store for uh what's in store for them so that's great that's sonia we're at time but thank you so much this was really enlightening um it's made me think about how I do video in a very different way so if anybody wants to connect with sonia reach out to her on linkedin and um, I hope you'll come back another time. And I'll see everyone next week on another edition of PR Patter.